Bonsoir. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Forest. Y'all? Are we on? There we go. Good morning. There we go. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you here at worship. Whether you're online or in person, we welcome you. If you're new with us, we'd love to get to know you better. Uh, there's some yellow cards on the welcome desk. You can fill one of those out and drop it in the pedestal boxes where the offerings are. It goes in. So if you're looking for an offering place, it's in the pedestal boxes. You drop it there. If you want credit, be sure to use a check or put it in an envelope, put your name on it. And we'll be happy to give you a credit for your taxes if you're able to do that. Uh, today we're having communion in both services. So if you're at home, uh, be sure to have some uh, grape, some kind of liquid grape and uh, some bread. And everybody else, you have two choices. You can take by intinction, which is down front. You'll get a piece of bread and dip it in the juice. Or you can take um, with the pre-filled cups. And they are in the back in front of the sound booth. And you can pick those up anytime during the service or during the communion time and go back and get those. Just remember, take the top top tab gets you to the wafer and the second tab gets you to the juice and just be careful not to squeeze a cup too hard or you'll have juice all over you so just be wary about that um, uh, we're trying to pick up our advertising now that we're kind of out of this pandemic or at least we're you know heading that way and uh, if you'd like to help us out advertising print advertising particularly is pretty expensive and social media if you want to help out with that let us know make a donation towards advertising we'd appreciate it we'll talk to you about it uh, those of you who attend both services, some, I know some of you go back and forth. We are uh, we have the flower calendar out for the sanctuary, so go over, go over there and you can fill out and give flowers uh, in honor or memory of somebody during the during the year. There's still lots of openings, so if you could do both services, that'll be an opportunity for you today. Excuse me. Today's a pre-Thanksgiving lunch after the service, so if you sign up, be sure to stay. And they made extra, so you can stay later. It's going to be served promptly at noon here in the Family Life Center. And uh, so you, you can want to have, join us for the pre-Thanksgiving lunch. Uh, you can uh, donate poinsettias. Uh, I know some people say poinsettias. That's what I say. But some people say poinsettias. And I know it's a Mexican word, so it's supposed to be poinsettias, but I still say poinsettias. Let's, let's have a fun this morning. Let's start, <laughs> let's start, a, let's start a, like a rowdy debate here. Let's see. How many of you say poinsettia? You're in the minority. How many say poinsettia? <laughs> Hang on. I, I see a married couple that disagree. A married couple disagree. <laughs> Marriage counseling this week at uh, 2 o'clock. So <laughs> well, Can we come to a compromise? We come, anyway, uh, yeah, Stephen started that last night on Facebook. So he's really going for it now. Get the, get the controversy for the holidays out there right away. <laughs> anyway, if you want to donate those, they're $10. Now, that helps. It's a fundraiser for helping with decorations around the campus. So uh, that's why they're the price they are. And they'll be in here in a couple of weeks scattered around. So you're welcome to donate those. Forms are in the back. Drop those in the collection plate. And if you're giving cash, put it in an envelope you can attach your check to it as well two ways to give to the angel tree this year uh, uh, we have uh, some angels actually angel ornaments on the tree for forward paths so the students there 18 19 20 21 22 go buy things are listed on there the kind of things that they would like you need to get them back in a couple weeks and you can uh, there's some on this little tree here and over in the sanctuary as well and you can pick those up and take those with you. And be, but if you take one, be sure to bring, if you, if you don't buy the things, bring the ornament back so somebody else can. You, you follow me? We don't want to leave somebody out. The, the second way you can get to Forward Paths, by the way, is December 5th, we're having a Christmas concert featuring Molly McGee plus several others from the church. And uh, that, that is going to have an offering for Forward Paths. We're hoping to raise a, quite a sum that day. So I hope you'll come out, bring your friends to the Christmas concert, and an offering will be taken for Forward Paths at that time. The other way you can give on the angel tree, we're trying something new this year with uh, compassion. Compassion helps children in impoverished countries around the world. Uh, you may recall Jesus said, um, you're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the, who knows, ends of the earth, right? But, it, but it, a tendency sometimes is we're just going to take care of around us, right? And so compassion gives us a chance to give. So what you do with the compassion is you're not going to give to a particular person. Uh, you can't adopt. We'll have a Compassion Sunday next year. One day we can adopt a child. But what basically you'll look on there. For instance, I have one in my hand here that says Bible. So if you give $10, 
you'll get help them purchase Bibles for students. But they go all the way up to $250 with all kinds of different things you can do. And back on the welcome desk, there's a little form like this. It's a giving tree. You, you fill it out with your name. If you, if, uh, if, you put your, if you want to give a check, make sure everything's attached together, the round disc, this, and your check. If you're giving cash, same thing. Make sure you put an envelope so we have it. If you need ex further explanation, you can actually get checks are be paid, made payable to Compassion rather than to Morrison, but we need to keep track of that. So turn them into us. We are going to mail everything to Compassion from here. So make sure you turn it in to Morrison. So those are a couple ways to go. We're very pleased that uh, Eileen Alvarez is on board. We introduced her last Sunday uh, as our new youth and children director, and she's going to come up now. She's very, already hitting the ground running during Advent. She's going to be launching a sort of a Sunday school kind of thing for Advent, and uh, so she's going to share with us uh, about what's coming up. Right <laughs> yes. Good morning, guys. Um, I am very happy to be here with Morrison. Um, just very excited. I did write a whole speech, so I'm going to try to keep it. Short and sweet. Um, first, I want to thank everybody um, that has came up to me in this past two weeks and said, you know, welcome. We're really looking forward to see what you have in store. Also, for all of those who sat around that table to chat with me during the interview, that was the best interview I've ever had in my life. <laughs> um, and then also, you know, thank you to God because I prayed for you guys for a very long time. I prayed for a congregation that didn't um, have a traumatic uh leaving of their youth director and you guys have been very lucky to have emily she's a wonderful person um has dedicated many years but it's you know every people change things change so um if you guys could give her a round of applause i would appreciate that she's not here today <laughs> but she is well deserving of that um so last week pastor dave said hey eileen come up we're we'll gonna introduce you oh by the way do you want to say a few words Everything melted in my mouth. <laughs> it was like butter just coming out. So I do want to say a few words because today I am prepared. Last week I was very unprepared, had no clue what to say. I just let it go, you know. Um, in my preparation this week, I've been, been here. I've been working hard. I've been cleaning. I've been writing lots of lists, lists of things that need to get done, lists of things that we can do, uh, a calendar for the year. Just been um, already asking Mike and Gary, can you guys move the pool table for me for the youth? I mean, trust me, I'm running. I'm getting it going. I'm preparing. I am ready for 2022. But I thought about it. I said, just as I was unprepared last week, we may be unprepared for Christ. Christmas is coming. Luckily, as Christians, we have Advent, right? So I thought about it and thought about it and decided, let's do a family devotional. But that doesn't mean just the children and the youth. I want the whole church family to participate. I can get to know you guys. You guys can get to know me in the next four weekends. It starts next week um, between the 9 and the 11, so everybody can come. Uh, it'll be 45 minutes of a little devotional, and I will actually also give you guys a booklet to take with you so that you can have the devotional throughout the whole entire Advent which I will also do a reading on the Facebook page that I've created for the youth and children, but I'd love for all of you guys to follow. Um, and then we'll have a game and we'll have a craft. And you guys can, you know, really come together as a family and we can see if there's anybody that wants to volunteer because, yes, that's where I'm going. <laughs> um, it's a calling, obviously. But um, as a family, as a church family, I feel like once a year we should all come together. And um, I really wanted to do that. That was really pressing against my heart. And I talked to David, and he was like, yeah, go with it. So if you guys uh, feel like you would like to join us for Advent devotional, I have two clipboards in the back behind, uh, behind you guys by the Christmas tree. So you can sign up. I just need a name, how many people are in your family or party, um, and an email because I'll send out an email reminder. So it'll be the next four Sundays if you want to prepare your heart for Christ. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. It's going to be over in the multi-ministry building or the gym, which is two buildings that direction. So come on out. And, uh, and if you've never been in our gym, it would be a great chance for you to be there. Now, finally, uh, thank you to all of you who helped with Bike Fest last weekend. We had quite a few helping with parking, counting money, and all sorts of things. So if you help with Bike Fest, would you stand up for a second? Thank you very much. Many hours are put in by these folks outside, inside. 
And Jill's not here today. She's probably still recovering. <laughs> she, she led the way, and we we're grateful for Jill. God bless you. Uh, welcome to worship. You confused me. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. How are we doing? I have something on my heart that I just wanted to share. I was uh, reading this morning the, the story of when Jesus was journeying to Jerusalem, and he entered a village, and there were ten leopards that cried out to him, Jesus, Master, heal us. And he told them to go and present themselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were healed. And one of them, seeing that they were healed, turned around and went back and gave praise and thanks to Jesus. The rest of them carried on with their normal everyday lives. And I, I feel like today I just I have this hunger to, I want to be that 10th leper. We were talking about it, and, and, and Kelly, Kelly's singing with us today. And she said, I want to be that 10th leper, the, the person that comes back and just thanks God continuously for everything that he's done for us. And I want to encourage you. We're, we're doing a new song, and it's an awesome song about just thanking God for what he's done. Let's not slip back into just the normal, everyday life. Let's continuously come back and say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done. Amen? Amen. So if you want to stand up, we're going to enter into worship. We're going to have some fun. This is a good clapping song if you want to. <laughs> to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. And just when I ran out of road, I met a man. Told me that I was not alone. You picked me up, you turned me around, and you placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart, you changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God.
Bible says we were dead in our sins, but through Christ, we were given new life. So we rise up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Turn me around and place my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior. Because you healed my heart, you changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. From heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dust.
may be seated. Our prayer time this morning, we're going to start off with some Thanksgiving, and uh, actually we're going to end with Thanksgiving. We're going to start with some prayer. I know we have several folks that have prayer concerns out there. We keep an active prayer list going, and we keep our prayer chain busy. Uh, so we're going to give you a chance to pray for folks who have particular needs today. So if you have a, a need, you're not going to be asked to say anything or do anything other than this. If you need prayer today, again, you're not going to have to say anything or why. Uh, if you just stand up or if you can't stand, lift your hand up and we will pray for you. So anybody need prayer today, we'll start there. Anybody needs prayer today? Say one over here and one here. Anybody else need prayer? Uh, if you happen to be near one of those folks with, hand, uh, with the hand up, well, just sort of put their, your hand on their shoulder lightly and we're going to pray for that person. Uh, so one here and one here. Anybody else need to be prayed for? One back here and two, one over here. So we got two there, there. And somebody for Ron there, put your hand on Ron's shoulder there. Anybody else? Okay. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for your amazing goodness and that you care about us. We just got through singing about this idea of resurrection, and we know resurrection, yes, it's the end times. We get to go be with you forever, but it's bigger than that. It's, it's just right now you come to restore relationship. That's resurrection. You come to give us hope when it, we feel hopeless. That's resurrection. You've come to give us direction and vision, and in your Holy Spirit comes to light a fire in us. And we thank you for the power of healing as Austin mentioned earlier about the, the lepers who were healed. And so there are persons who lifted a hand up. They need special prayer today for various reasons. Some it's family members, some it's some person themselves. And we pray for your abiding healing power and strength, and guidance, wholeness, peace, and comfort to be upon each one who asks for prayer. And we pray also for our whole church family. We have many in our church family who are, are grieving, and this time of year grief is felt more keenly. We, we pray for those in our uh, church family that are, that are hurting or facing surgery. One of our members just moved into a rehab for a couple of weeks, and we pray as he goes through his, his therapy and strengthens his legs and body, we pray for peace. And we thank you that you are on the job ministering to these persons. And if you want to name somebody out loud, I'm going to give you a chance to do that right now. Uh, if you want to name, pray for somebody, you can name them out loud or pray for them silently. And now we're going to take a chance, time to give thanks to God on this Thanksgiving week. And I invite you to uh, either silently you can give thanks to God or if you want to say something out loud, you're thankful to God, just short things, uh, you know, short sentences. If you want to say something out loud, uh, thank you God for, and you can name one or two things or you can do that silently. And now, now's the moment. Take that time to give thanks. We thank you, our Lord, so many things. We have breath, we have salvation, we have friends, there's family. We have those who have gone before us to the church triumphant, uh, and we thank you for them. We thank you for the generations ahead. We thank you for the work of our church and, and dozens and dozens of other things. And we thank you for grace and salvation that came through Jesus Christ. We do pray that your Holy Spirit would be upon us, that we may, may give glory to you and, and all we do, and that what all we do reflects a thanksgiving to you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I forgot to mention that uh, the, the bloodmobiles here, we had the bloodmobile here from 8.30 till more or less until I think 2.30. And they're parked just out front on Main Street. So you can go out there. You don't have to have an appointment. Just go on out there. And I think they have like four beds at a time. So you can go on out and give blood right after the service. And they'll be here again until 2.30. If you're online watching us and you say, oh, I'd like to give blood, well, you can come on in. And they got all the health standards there, and you can go uh, give blood. I also want to mention, I got a, I got a sinus-like thing going on today. It's, uh, I don't know if it's a sinus infection. It started when Bike Fest started. And as soon as the motorbikes started coming in, I started having all kinds of problems. And it's been going off and on for a week. So during the night, I was sneezing. You know these kind of sneezes that you can't count, and they just really... So I'll try to get my micro... If that happens, I'll get my microphone off, I hope. <laughs> 
If not, just have to forgive me in advance. Uh, I think I'll be all right. I haven't been so far since worship, but I wanted to just say that in advance, just in case it happens. Uh, and I won't sneeze on the communion elements or the band, so we'll do our best. <laughs> Hopefully that won't happen. But this us uh, reaffirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence shall come the judge, the quick, and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And our mission statement. Connecting people to God's transforming love through worship, discipleship, fellowship, and service. So we've been on this journey for about 20 weeks in a non-series kind of thing, but we started with the birth of Jesus and all the way through the exaltation of Jesus and talked about his triumphant return and all, when all things become new. We're going to go back to Holy Week. Next week we begin Advent, so we'll start all over again with the future hope with the, the prophets and move on to the birth of Christ with Christmas. But we're going to uh, uh, go back to the Holy Week and Jesus giving thanks at the table uh, where Passover was being celebrated. Remember, Passover is a parallel to Holy Communion for us because the Holy Communion is rooted in the Passover celebration uh, of the Jewish people. And the Passover, remember, is a celebration of God's deliverance from Egypt and God bringing them together, giving them the law, make, calling them to be a people and a kingdom of priests, and all those things are celebrated in the Passover meal every year. And Jesus would have celebrated Passover at least 30 plus times in his lifetime. Uh, and so it would have been a part of what his culture was. And so we're first we're gonna hear a few scriptures and then we're going to look at the, read the ritual together. We don't always do the whole ritual in the service, but we're gonna uh, take the ritual uh, down to a certain point. Then I'm gonna have the sermon and then we're gonna finish the, the ritual. Uh, and then we'll have Holy Communion together. Uh, so here, here the word of God is recorded by Matthew, beginning at verse, uh, chapter 26, beginning at verse 17. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want me to t make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go into the city to a, certain, uh, to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him that he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While we were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup when they had given thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant poured out, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it anew with, the king, with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went to the Mount of Olives. It's the word of God for the people of God. So we're going to begin the, the ritual, and there's an invitation. Christ, invite, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. And I would add to that that if you need a touch of grace, a fresh touch of grace, you're welcome to the table. If you can answer that invitation, you can participate in Holy Communion in our church. So therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. We'll pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You're invited now to make your personal confession before the Lord.
Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. With the authority of the scriptures, you may know this is in there. We can loose, what we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I say to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And now you, you can say that to me now. And now let's celebrate together. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We're going to stop there and we're going to move into the sermon. We're going to come back and invoke the Holy Spirit at the end as we prepare to come to the table. But let's talk about it. It's right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty. Some of you know that Holy Communion is called in many traditions the Eucharist. How many of you know that? I've heard the word Eucharist. And the Eucharist comes from a Latin word that means thanksgiving or to give thanks. Because the whole ritual, the whole idea of Holy Communion is a thanksgiving moment. It is thanking God for his delivering power, his arrival into our, on our planet and Jesus to deliver us and show us the way back to the Father, to give us hope and strength. And, it, and that's why it's always right and everywhere to give thanks to the Father. And so we're going to talk about that. And so Jesus celebrates his Passover meal with his friends. And that meal in itself is a thank you meal. It's a thank you in so many ways. Part of it's a celebration of, of God's delivering power. So you know the story of the, 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 the Israelites end up in Egypt, or 70 of them arrive there, and over time they become this great people, this great network of people. They become tens of thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And eventually a pharaoh came to power uh, some generations after a man named Joseph, one of the children of Israel, so about four centuries later, in fact, uh, who became nervous about these people living in his country, and they, made, uh, they put them under taskmasters and, and enslaved them. And, and so God came, and remember he met Moses? Moses is watching sheep uh, on a mountain, and God shows up in a bush, and God says to Moses, I have seen the affliction of my people, and I have come to deliver them, and I'm sending you to do it. And we have a whole sermon we can do on Moses and his reluctance. How many of you know Moses was a reluctant servant? Have you ever read, in fact, in the Bible, you'll discover frequently people are reluctant servants. The apostle Peter tells Jesus and Luke, uh, you might as well just leave me alone. I'm a sinner. Just go. And Jesus says, no, nah, I got you. Come on. And, and brings him with him. We have people like Gideon in the book of Judges who says, I'm the least in my father's house. Who's the smallest clan of the smallest tribe of all of Israel. And, and God used him to deliver the people of Israel from the Midianites. Moses, he had all kinds of excuses, everything from they won't believe me to I don't talk very well. Uh, God, by the way, if you keep giving excuses to God, will eventually get angry. How many of you know that? Just want to let you just don't let you know if you keep telling God no, God may one day say, um, <clears throat> <laughs> it's time to step up. Uh, he told Moses, look, your brother's on his way. Get up. 
and you go with your brother back to Egypt. Anyway, just let you know, that's a fair warning. It's in the book uh, that you might, uh, you know, have to deal with that. Uh, but God, God comes down and delivers them, right? And he, he tells them, he sends Moses to Pharaoh, and they have the plagues. And, and by the way, if you decide to watch Ten Commandments with, uh, uh, by Cecil B. DeMille with, uh, with um, Char- uh, what's his name, Charlton Heston, it's a great movie, but it's all ha- ha- most of it's fabricated. So just <laughs> there's a little part of it's like the Bible, and, and only a little part of it. Uh, but but it's it's kind of cool to watch the the plagues and the things happening. But God comes in and delivers the people, and this angel of death passes over them, and so they call us the Passover, and it reminds them that they escaped the punishment, and they were delivered to become a people. And we won't go through the whole Exodus piece, but the celebration with using symbolic things to remind them that God came down and came to us and God spoke to us through Moses and God spoke to us directly, really. And God came with a mighty hand and miracle after miracle and freed us. So our, the symbols we use are bread and juice to remind us of the delivering power of the cross. We have the cross as a symbol of reminder of what this big thing that Jesus did in saving us. And so we, they gathered in that night. And Jesus, as I mentioned earlier, some 30 plus times, because he was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. And from the time he was a young child, he would have sat at a table and watched them have Passover. And, and they would have had it year after year. And eventually when he was old enough to talk, he would have been tasked with saying to, the, to, to Joseph, uh, or any, uh, some other older male person there, why is this night different than any other night? And somebody would tell the story of the Exodus. And he would have been the one doing that. And now he's the one who answered the question. We didn't go through that part here, but they, they were celebrating the Passover. So at some point during this meal, he would have been asked by one of the disciples, why is this night different? And Jesus would have retold the story of the delivering power of an almighty God who came down to make this his people. And so they celebrated that, and they celebrated that God's continued presence with them, that God was continually present. It wasn't interrupted. Even when, he, even when God it looks like God is not around, God is always around. Uh, and, and so we know that God is there. We just have to sometimes open our minds to it. There's various reasons that God may seem silent. God may even choose silence for a while for us to dig deeper and grow spiritually. Uh, some people call that the dark night of the soul when you, when you feel the absence of God, but sometimes God does it on purpose, so we'll trust him and dig deep instead of relying on our own selves. But God is always present, and that's what the Passover celebrated. Even though it seemed to the people for 400 years God seemed to be absent, the truth was God never was absent. Uh, God was there with them, and, and it celebrates God's covenant with the people. So God leads the people. Remember what God said to Moses? He's on Mount Horeb, and God says to him, go and deliver your people, and the sign that I'll be with you is you'll bring the people back here to this same mountain. Uh, another sermon for another day, but just briefly say to you that sometimes God gives these signs that you don't get to see unless you're obedient first. And this is one of those cases. Moses, the proof that I'm going to be with you is you're going to bring the people back. So trust me and go, and then when you get back here, well, no, that sounds strange, right? It's kind of like building a bridge while you're walking on it. Often that's how God does business. Have you ever know that? God did it with Abraham. He did it with them. He did it with the shepherds at Christmas. Jesus is born. He says to the shepherds, if you go to Bethlehem, you're going to find a child. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this is how you're going to know it. You're going to see a child wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger. But in order for them to get the affirmation, they had to get up and go. You follow that? If they would have stayed in the fields, they never, ever, ever would have experienced the power of the moment that they were invited to. And so God invited Moses to go, and the people came, and he comes down in and, and great, great power onto this mountain, and he, he writes the Ten Commandments with his own finger and uh, his own hand, and, and then he, he tells them all the law and makes a covenant with them. And it's a time of thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for making us a people. That's what they were celebrating that night. It's into that moment that Jesus ushers in what we call, what we call now Holy Communion. Uh, and, and it's Jesus giving thanks in the middle of it. Part of the ritual of the, of the Passover is this idea of thanksgiving. And so Jesus gave thanks to the Father. First of all, that deliverance was about to take place. You see the parallels then 
with with Passover. Excuse me. Uh, Passover was about deliverance. Jesus is about to be be a new deliverer. I'm going to deliver you from sin, and I'm going to deliver you from death. That's what he spent his whole ministry trying to do, is appoint people to this reality that God is eternal and that God and his eternal grace is with you, and God and his eternal grace is going to deliver you from the sin and death, the two great enemies that all humans have. And so he, he introduces them to this idea with, this, with bread and wine. Yes, we Methodists use grape juice, and so you hear me say juice, but uh, Jesus would have drank wine. And if you grew up one of those traditions that doesn't like wine and They'll tell you that it was more like grape juice with a little little kick. No, it was the real deal, just so you know. <laughs> Probably didn't taste very good by our standards, but uh, but it was the real deal. But that's another story for another day. There, why Methodists have supported uh, folks who have addictions, and that's why we use uh, grape juice. Uh, and, and so we have juice in our tradition. Uh, so, but this reminder of, of thanksgiving, that something's about to happen of deliverance, through Jesus and his sacrifice. And isn't that what we celebrate in the ritual? The whole ritual is just brief good news that reminds us through his life, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to the church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death. And in part of the ritual, we said, we ask God to free us for joyful obedience. Joy, obedience can be joyful when it's done for the right, obedience is for God, and you'll feel the joy of it. And it happens when we're freed from slavery to sin and death, and he does that at the cross. And so when he begins to break the bread and he, and he shares the cup, which most scholars believe was the third cup. There's four cups of wine in the Passover, and one of them was about deliverance, the third cup. And some, most believe that's what, what he was sharing with them is a reminder that now the deliverance of sin and death is going to happen. They never had that, really. I mean, they had the, the sacrifices they made at the temple all, all the time. But as the scriptures teach us in the New Testament, once for all when he did it. And so his atonement for the sins of the world happened then. Uh, atonement means that he, he came to make us at one with God, uh, and it, but yet we can freely choose against him if we want. So he, he died. there's universal atonement, but that doesn't mean universal salvation. People have to want it. If you don't want it, you don't have to take it. But it's, he made it possible for all people to, be, uh, to, to receive sac, sac, thanks, uh, salvation. Uh, Jesus' thanksgiving uh, was also about, is filled with patient mercy and grace and fearless courage. Uh, I wrote it that way because uh, if you think about this. Guess who, you know who was sitting at the table with him, right? He tells them, well, he's going to betray me, and he's breaking bread. And by this time, they've already had two cups of wine from, the, from this meal. He's breaking bread with them, and he's passing his cup around. And, and then he says to them, you're going to betray me. And he does this Thanksgiving thing. He celebrates Thanksgiving with the man who would betray him sitting next to him. How do we know that Judas was sitting next to him? Because he said, the one who dips in the plate with me, so he had to be sitting right next to him. The others had their own plates set around, and so most believe, and we know from John's gospel that John was sitting right next to him. So John was on one side, Judas on the other side, and he's sitting there in a seat of honor next to the Savior. And Jesus still gives thanks. Yes, a warning for sure uh, to Judas, but he's still giving thanks. The betrayer at the table he has that kind of fearless thanksgiving that takes courage because he knew that even in this moment there's much to be grateful for. I'm about to deliver the world from sin and death. I'm about to go to the other side. Hebrews says, Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews says it beautifully when he says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And when he's sitting there sharing this, this meal with his friends, he had courage enough to say, thank you, Father, because he knew on the other side of what he's about to go through would be the deliverance. That's why the Apostle Paul can say to the church and uh, the Thessalonians, and he says it to the Ephesians and some others, give thanks in all circumstances. He didn't say for, for the circumstance, but he said in the circumstance. There's something to be grateful for. Have you ever noticed that in your life, that there's always something to be grateful for? I remember a woman said to me one time who had been very active all her life, and she had reached a certain age in life, uh, I won't say, but she reached a certain place in life, and she couldn't get out anymore. And she said, 
Well, for X number of years, I've been able to go and do, I'm not going to complain to God now about the last year, this last year, since I had all these decades of good. I thought, well, what a philosophy of life, right? Uh, to find yourself in that place where she understood there's something to be grateful for. Uh, it, it's the spouse that loses the spouse, and they give thanks to God for the years they had. And, and, and even in the midst of their grief, they find a way to say thank you. It's those moments in life where we realize that there's much to be thankful for. Uh, if you've got a roof over your head still and you've got food on your table, there's still much to be thankful for. And so Jesus had that kind of courage. He gave thanks to the Father even in the midst of this moment when he knew that it, they would all forsake him. He tells them that on the trip. According to Matthew, he tells them on the way over they're all going to forsake him. Uh, and, and he tells Judas he's going to betray him, and he still did it. And he gives thanks to the God, God the Father Almighty. They even sang a hymn on the way. It's part of the tradition to sing a hymn on the way out to where they were going, and they were celebrating. They celebrated in the midst. They gave thanks. This Thanksgiving week, there's much to give thanks for. And that's what Jesus did. He found a way to give thanks, especially because he was about to be able to give um, this moment of deliverance from, from, from sin and death. Uh, Thanksgiving is a, is a call for us to find a way to give thanks in our circumstances. Find that thing or things to give thanks. There's much to give thanks for. Some years... We're all operating on all cylinders and everything's going well, right? And life is good. Other years, life is tough. Uh, but even in those moments, we find ways to give thanks. My first church, I met a woman whose husband died, uh, I think it was two days before Christmas. And we were, we were talking and she said, I, I don't want my children to associate the death of my husband, their grandfather. I don't want the, my grandchildren to associate Christmas with the death of their grandfather. So what we're going to do is... They're not going to pretend it didn't happen, but they were just going to pause, wait a few days after uh, Christmas. We'll come back and grieve him then. And they would have, I'm no doubt, cried, and there was this missing because you can't help it at the dinner table and so on. But she said, what we're going to do is, is we're going to live, live this Christmas because he loved Christmas and the sea and the children. And she said, we're going we're gonna to let the kids celebrate, and we're going to celebrate, and we're going to celebrate him. And then we're going to come back next week and say goodbye. And so that's a person who found a way to say thank you in the middle of their pain. And the grief was real and it was hard, but they found a way. And Jesus models this for us. But it's also this thank is op opportunity for us uh, to invoke the power and presence of the Holy Spirit into our lives. We give thanks to God for, for creating us. We say, we, you might say this, we thank the Father for creating us, and we thank the Son for delivering us, and we thank the Holy Spirit for assuring us and, and uh, affirming us and empowering us uh, to, to carry forth the work. And so the first part of the ritual of Holy Communion is this moment of, of thanksgiving to Jesus for what he did and his person and work, and we confess our sins, and we know we're forgiven of our sins and we thank God for that. And then we invoke the power of the Holy Spirit to transform us. And so jump to that part of the ritual, brother, where we get to, um, at the end there. And so, we'll, so, so here is this. We ask God, this is part of the prayer at the end of the Holy Communion ritual. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here, on all of us. And on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Jump, uh, there you go. One, one, uh, I think we went backwards, but uh, I will, uh, I got my, my, there we go, thank you. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, uh, read this with me, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Continue reading, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. We may evoke the Holy Spirit. It's our way of saying we want to be transformed. 
We say, God, make these to be for us the body and blood of Christ. We believe Christ is present in the sacrament. Nothing's changed. It's still bread and juice, but we believe he's present in the sacrament. And we believe something changes there. Something's happening there. And we say that because we also believe that he can transform us by his Holy Spirit. And so with thanksgiving, we invoke the Holy Spirit to come upon us, to make us new, like he did for Moses and made him a great deliverer. And Jesus looking at his friends, knowing that one day they too would be deliverers like Moses was, sharing good news. It's Jesus taking a, 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 a Peter and saying, yes, I know you're a sinner, but come with me anyway and change the world. And that's what we do at Holy Communion. It's a reminder that he comes to transform us and we can give thanks to him. And so when you receive bread today, whether you're taking him in the pre-filled cups or taking in tinction, uh, make sure you hear the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And that's your great chance to say, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Now help me live by your spirit courageously in the world that we may be one together, all of us, that we may be one in ministry so that the world can change. And that's the hope. And so I remind you that he's broken for you, that you can be whole in him. He gave himself for you. And he shed his blood that we might be cleansed from all uncleanness and made new in him. So I invite you to come to the table of Christ. If you, the pre-filled cups are in the back, if you didn't already get them, take them when you're ready. Say to yourself, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ. If you're at home, when you're ready, partake of Holy Communion. The servers are coming now, and so you can free to come to take by intinction. And may the Lord bless you. If you need prayer, I'll be by the front row. I'll be happy to pray with you. There's a kneeler to the front right, a kneeling pad to the front left. You're welcome to pray as well.
Thank you for, yes, thank you for joining us for worship today, whether online or in person. We'll hope to see you next week. Remember, if you're, you want to give blood, uh, the blood mobile is right out front, so go out there. And if you're going to Sunday school and want to go back later, go make an appointment. They'll take appointments, and they'll set you up for a later time. May the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.